Welcome to WTSA here in New Delhi. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio right now by the Secretary General of ISO, Sergio Mojica. Sergio, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask you, how can uh, we harness standardization processes to accelerate progress towards the SDGs? Very good. The SDGs represent our shared vision for a better world, but uh, we are not doing very well as a humanity, and we're off track, and I'm convinced that standard can play a significant role in supporting the SDGs for the full implementation. How can we help? That's the key question. And the first way we can help is by teaming up with the UN. So we have uh, achieved a strategic partnership with UNDP, and we are co-creating a standard on SDGs. With this, we can support all kinds of organizations, private sector, public sector, SMEs, large corporations, everyone to do their own part in the implementation of the SDGs so they can incorporate it in their normal business. So that's the first thing. The second one is by doing things better ourselves. And that means that every time we have 760 technical committees and, and we have provided guidance to all those technical committees so they incorporate sustainability consideration in the standard development process. So we don't have to fix anything afterwards. We incorporate it as from the beginning. That's very important. And the third one is by mapping our portfolio. We have 25,000 international standards. And now we can connect each and every one of them with the respective SDG. So any person in the planet can look at the SDG they're interested in. For example, you know, water management or energy uh, poverty alleviation or whatever. And then they know exactly what standard can support them in that journey. 25,000 international standards. Yes. Have you got a particular favorite? <laughs> Well, the new standard on SDGs that we have co-created with the United Nations. Excellent. Okay, very good answer. Now, standardization uh, can have a significant impact on developing countries' uh, access to and participation in AI advancements. I wanted to ask you, how can standards help promote equitable access uh, to AI capabilities for all countries? I think the key element of the value proposition of ISO is that we create global solutions for global challenges. What does it mean in practice? That I can give you a new standard in a couple of weeks if we bring you know, uh, very expert people and we have a conversation in a closed circle. The way we operate is by including everybody in that conversation. We have an open system and the voice of developing countries is absolutely indispensable if we want to remain relevant. So how do we do it in practice? First of all, we have a dedicated technical committee on artificial intelligence. It's called JTC1 SC42. <laughs> But the beauty of that is that we have 60 countries represented in that effort, and many of them developing countries. To provide concretely uh, tools for developing countries to be part of that conversation. And we have a full sponsorship program where we invite and help developing countries to participate in that conversation. And we believe that if standards are really a, a global solution, that means that they will have the buy-in from those developing countries to implement them in their own uh, countries. And that is also very important for technology transfer, because at the end of the day, a standard represents the best knowledge on whatever subject that can be you know, used in developing or developed countries. So I think it's going to be very important to bridge the, the digital divide as well. Another important topic, of course, is, is climate change. Yep. Uh, we're going to be at uh, the COP29 uh, in, um, in, a, in a month's time, essentially, looking at green digital action. I wanted to ask you, in, in, from where you are, uh, how can uh, standards support climate action? Perhaps you could give us a, a few examples. Yeah, I think the first thing to mention here is strategic partnership. Why is that? Because if we want to be successful in climate change, in combating climate change, we need to join forces. And for the very first time in Baku, we will have a standard pavilion where the IEC, the ITU, ISO, and many others will participate with a single voice to tell policymakers that we can help. We're here to help. Then we have a number of very concrete standards that can support everyone in uh, addressing the challenges related to climate change. We have environmental management standard that is our flagship, the family of the 14,001. Uh, 14, we have uh, energy management, water management, and we also have a dedicated standard in net zero because this is a very practical guidance, step by step, to every organization to, to the very minimal day emissions. 
Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at WTSA. You, you here for a few days? You here for the whole conference? No, only for two days. I participated in the celebration of World Standards Day yesterday Indeed. and also in the World Standard Cooperation with ITU, IEC, and ISO. Well, thank you for your flying visit and look forward to perhaps catching up with you in Baku. Absolutely. See you there. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's very, very kind of you to join us. Very good. Thank Thanks you. you. And if you've enjoyed uh, this interview, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>